The transmission in my uh, 1994 Dodge Cummins is starting to slip a little bit. That's a common problem in those old trucks. I love that old truck. It's been a good truck to me. You put a lot of miles on it. I like driving Cedars rig too. <laughs> and uh, maybe a new truck is in the works for me. I've been looking at a few things uh, on the internet, but nothing's close by. So we got to drive about three hours south to go look at a couple different trucks. There's a reason why I drive old trucks. The stuff that I do uh, around our place, when I just in general, it's just hard on the road more than anything. It's just hard on on vehicles. So for that reason, I'm trying to find at least a one ton, preferably a, a one ton, and uh, it needs to be a diesel, of course. But it's not really a great time to be buying new stuff. So anyway, if nothing else, we're driving three hours south to go eat at my favorite little tiny <laughs> Thai restaurant. Oh, well, that's what it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Good, we just came up to see if we could borrow some two inch ABS from Heath. We're working on our bathroom. I'm gonna have to rearrange the driveway so I can get my old truck up here. Or get something that can handle the road. Yeah, these old dually tires aren't gonna look at that. I, I tore them up a little bit. <laughs> don't, laugh, don't laugh at my truck. Um, when it comes to plumbing, you cannot combine dissimilar metals like copper and galvanized without creating what's called electrolysis. And electrolysis causes the pipes to break down and will eventually lead to leaks. With galvanized and aluminum, the same thing occurs. I didn't think about this. I got a few messages from people pointing, at, pointing out that, that by putting the aluminum plate on top of the uh, galvanized metal roof that the galvanized would break down. I believe it's called uh, galvanic corrosion. My plan was to put a bead of a urethane caulking between the two, but, but after I took this into consideration, I realized that that was nowhere near enough. Uh, somebody recommended that I use the Grace Ultra on the backside of the aluminum bracket, which probably would work. Me doing what I do, I ran down to the local tire store, went through their trash can, Got an old used heavy duty tire, uh, inner, inner tube for a tire that I'm now gonna cut up and make uh, basically a gasket. A gasket that's gonna go in between the two pieces of metal so there's no chance of that galvanic corrosion. I'm still gonna use the urethane um, uh, to the caulking to seal everything. And I'm still gonna drill holes right down through my roof um, to ensure that that lower bracket goes nowhere. This has nothing to do with money, okay? Maybe I made the mistake in the last video of, of acting like this was a financial thing. Uh, I've had a whole bunch of people say, why don't you just build another array where it's at? The main reason for doing this is because the sun does not hit those panels 
until almost uh, 1130 in the morning and it's gone by about 3.30 in the afternoon because those, those the, the currently where the ground mount systems sit, they sit very low. One of the other suggestions was, uh, was to put it on the shop. Why don't you put it on the shop? Uh, same thing, sun does not hit the shop as early as it hits the house. The sun hits the house in the winter time because the house is quite a bit higher. The sun hits the house probably an hour and a half to even two hours earlier than it hits the uh, solar panels. Um, is there a potential I'll have issues with snow? For sure. I, I, I've acknowledged that. Um, there's still a possibility at some point I may put solar panels on the, uh, the uh, shop roof. Uh, but that would require that I move the batteries and the inverters out there to the shop, which may happen someday. There's an idea that I can compensate with more solar panels and leave it where it's at. And our system will handle more solar panels. I talked about that a couple of videos back when we put the new batteries in. Um, but this is what I'm gonna do. I, and I feel confident doing this. Um, I'm gonna do this in a way where it's not gonna leak. And I'm not gonna be taking those panels off the roof in the future. If I do have some snow issues up there around the solar panels, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to deal with it. Uh, but because the sun hits that roof so much earlier, it doesn't take a whole lot of sun on those solar, solar panels before the snow just slips right off of there. So that's why I'm moving the solar panels from the ground to the roof. I don't like seeing them out my master bedroom window, but, but it's, not about, it's, not a, it's truthfully not as much about aesthetics as it is about the performance of, of our, our system. Um, now that I have the new roof in place, um, there's no reason why I can't confidently move everything up there and do it in a way where the roof is never going to leak and I'm done with it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Our new system will handle three kilowatts per battery, uh, even a little more than that actually. Um, that's 15 kilowatts of solar panels. I currently have about seven kilowatts. Um, I could upgrade those panels to a 400 watt panel. That was something I considered, but even a 400 watt panel, there's, e there's even more than that. There's 410. 420, I've even seen 435 watt panels. Um, they're not cheap. And these panels that I have are very, very good quality panels. So if anything, the only thing that could change at some point down the road is these 275 watt panels uh, might get swapped out for a higher wattage, but that's not gonna happen for, for a, a number of years. This is all about optimizing our solar system and minimizing the amount of time the generator has to run to recharge those batteries. By putting it up high on the roof like this, it will get sun at least an hour and a half earlier and at least an hour longer in the day. So I'm gonna cut these gaskets out of this uh, inner tube and then I'm gonna start the process of installing it. Let me real quickly talk about that truck that I picked up last week. It's a 1991 Dodge W350 4x4. And the original plan was to use this as the new plow truck. But after getting it home and looking it over and seeing just in fact how clean it is, I'm going to build this truck. Lift, wheels and tires, and I think I'm going to drive it for a while. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna sell my 94 Dodge Cummins or if I'm gonna go through it and rebuild the transmission and maybe paint it in the process. But at least I have something I can drive around in the meantime. As far as the racking system is concerned for the solar panel arrays, it has gone together very well. The ideas that I had in my head are working out well on the new roof. The mounting plates that I made have made it quite a bit more sturdy than the original brackets would have, and this is very important. I 
I deliberately put this lower mount down low enough on the eaves where the holes that I'm drilling through are exposed on the underside of the eaves. So if it in fact did ever leak, it wouldn't leak down into the house, but under the eaves, but it's not gonna leak. So I'm not worried about that. On this lower edge, I used carriage bolts to lag the mounting plates down tight I used that urethane sealer between the galvanized roofing and the rubber, then the rubber and the aluminum brackets. And again, I'm certain that it's not only strong enough, but also that it will not leak. Most roof mount solar panel racking systems sit down snug against the roof. I would guess part of this is because of wind and probably because most manufacturers don't want a homeowner getting up on their roof, adjusting the angle of their own solar array. But in my situation, I would like to be able to adjust the solar panel array as the sun moves around at different times of the year. With an adjustable solar panel array, you typically adjust it twice a year. Sometime in April and May, and sometime in October. We typically aim for right around 21 degrees in April or May. And then in October, I lean the solar panel arrays up to somewhere around 50 degrees. This is all relative to our longitude and where the sun falls on those solar panel arrays. This is something that's gonna be different depending on where you are in the world. There are graphs that help you figure out what angle your solar panel should be at in relation to where you are on the planet. What I have found over the last couple of weeks that I've been building the new solar panel racking system is that even though it is adjustable, I will probably leave the solar panel array at the wintertime angle, at least on the second story. All three of the solar panel arrays are not going to fit on the second story. I'm going to have to split one of them up and put a portion of it on the new roof down on the first story on this back side as well. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but I'm going to add a fourth solar panel array to the solar system, and that fourth array will be mounted on the first story roof. Okay, tomorrow morning, uh, Cedar and I are gonna clean the 
solar panels and then one by one I'm going to bring them up here and make sure that it's laid out the way that uh, it is up on the hill. I basically pulled measurements off the existing uh, solar arrays and uh, duplicated it here. Once I know for sure I've got the right place, uh, got everything in the right position, I will then build the upper support bracket. And uh, it's, it's going surprisingly well. It's not going anywhere. There's no way that uh, lower bracket is going anywhere um, the way that I installed it. So uh, now it's just a process of, of kind of fine tuning things. And then once the solar panels are in place, then I'll stand them up, find the angle that I want to have going into, into winter and uh, then I got to wire them up, which re really the wiring isn't uh, a big deal. The only concern I, I have with the wiring is making sure everything is weatherproof uh, so I don't have to get up here in the middle of the winter to make sure that uh, something is not connected properly. So I need to get five more of these set up to go on the roof for the upper part of the racking system. And then Cedar's going to help me clean the solar panels and then I'm going to start moving them up on the roof. The way that we live our lives, there's always an opportunity to improve something. And that's how I always approach these projects. But that being said, it needs to be done in a way where it doesn't require any maintenance other than maybe cleaning the solar panels once in a while. We don't have excessive wind up here, but every once in a while, we do have a 50 mile an hour wind blow through. For this reason, the mounts must be secure enough that the solar panel array stays right where it's supposed to in these high wind situations. By using the rubber in between the aluminum and the galvanized, it solves the galvanic corrosion problem, but it will also act like a shock absorber when those panels might be vibrating just a little bit with the high winds. What I wanna do is flip them over face down first and I'm gonna tape the positive and negative wires down so while we're lifting them on the roof they don't get hung up on anything. Okay. Um, just clean them as best we can on the front side and then I'm gonna... Okay, but not clean them with water, just wipe them... Whatever you, you're the, that's your department, not mine. Well, whatever I you think is best. car wash if you want. No, I just, I would assume just some good quality, maybe wipe the dust off them and just some good quality cleaner, probably handle it. Okay. So let's give her a go. Okay. Flip it over. This is what you need duct tape. If your solar panels are dirty, simply wiping the solar panels down is going to add to their efficiency. And because they are up on the second story, I don't want to do this too often. Cedar and I are taking the time to clean them here and now before we put them up on the second story roof. When this solar panel array was on the ground mount system, I would regularly have to mow around it and use the weed eater around it, which caused the solar panels to get dusty. By having the solar panels up on the second story, we won't have this problem anymore. Uh, 
you're gonna go like this and all you gotta do is get it up like that high and then I can kneel down and grab it and you're gonna guide it up to me we don't want to rub on the roof so you're gonna guide it up to me as I lift it you want to try it? Yes, yeah, so just remember I'm short and I can't really see. Ready? Ready? You're going to guide it. Keep coming. Okay. Okay. Let me stand up. That's all as far as I can reach. The constant challenge I have had during this process is how slippery the roof is. I've gone through every pair of shoes that I own trying to find one that works better than another and you'll see on next week's video how I finally solved that problem. As I've been building the racking system, I can already see one area that I need to improve. I will end up adding a third mid-span mounting bracket to the solar panel array once it's standing up and in place. But I will go into that more in detail in a future video. I'm excited about how it's turning out. It's going to be very, very stable and secure, and it will more than provide the energy that we need on those short winter days that will be here very soon. All right, I'm about to lift the first solar panel up there and get everything positioned the way I want it. Um, I'm so over being on this roof. Uh, I've gone through about every pair of shoes I have trying to figure out uh, one that might be a little bit more sticky than the other. Um, not having a whole lot of luck. Anyway, once I get the solar panel, the front, I'm gonna try and do the bottom three and make sure everything is properly spaced. Then I'll uh, start bolting everything off and then it's just one at a time after that then i'm going to stand it up and find my angles and brace everything and it really should be good to go so uh hopefully the hard stuff's done but uh we're about to find out here on our upcoming video you're going to get to see our new solar panel array complete stood up and what happened when a high wind advisory came through in the middle of all this.